A strange flashing light on the eastern horizon has been noted by stargazers for the past several years. Orange, blue, red, green, what's going on? The object rapidly pulsates and changes color many times per second. Are we in danger of a nuclear stellar detonation? No. It looks like an aircraft beacon, but it hovers in one spot tracking the night sky with the rest of the stars. It's not a bird or a plane. What could it be? Is this star about to detonate? Or is there something extraterrestrial going on I need to call the authorities about? I better call 911. No, maybe you should call me. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Late winter in northern Maine heralds warmer weather and the first signs that spring is around the corner. Looking toward the heavens, the signs of spring also abound. People across the United States have been looking eastward in the nighttime sky to see a bright, flashing object rapidly pulsating in the sky. Internet chat forums are filled with the question, what is that bright, flashing light in the sky? As it turns out, the bright flashing object is the star Arcturus in the constellation Bootes, and the flashing is a natural phenomenon. As a matter of fact, when we talk about Arcturus, and let's clarify the name itself, certainly at first blush is a little uncommon. Its translation is bear driver, Urus, from the Greek bear, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, Urus, uh, even in French, Urs, Bear, Arc, the driver, Bear driver. Arcturus is the Lucida, or the brightest star of the constellation of Baotis. Imagine a beautiful spring morning with instead of one sun's coming above the horizon, 187 suns appeared above the horizon. That's how much more luminous the star is than our own beacon, our own sunny sentinel. Arcturus is a tremendous, humongous, immense thermonuclear generator of power and the immense luminosity generated does reach this planet, does reach Aroostook County, does reach your eye. And I'm happy to report it's still shining mightily in the sky. The King James Bible mentions Arcturus twice by name in the book of Job which maketh Arcturus, Orion, and Pleiades in the chambers of the south. Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season, or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Arcturus is in the top five of the brightest stars in the nighttime sky. The brightest star is Sirius, followed by Alpha Centauri. Third is Canopus then Arcturus, and finally Vega. As a matter of fact, there is contention because some would claim Arcturus is actually fourth, and Vega, oh yes, I said it well, Vega as the fourth of this brightest star. For our purposes, let's call Arcturus the fourth brightest and Vega the fifth brightest. Because of its position low on the horizon, the light from Arcturus flashes due to an atmospheric effect called scintillation. When a star is directly overhead, its light tends to remain fairly constant and relatively unaffected by the Earth's atmosphere. But when it's low on the horizon, passing through much more of the Earth's turbulent atmosphere, its light appears to flicker rapidly and course through a multitude of colors. The brighter the star, the more pronounced the effect will be. What you're observing in the starlight Arcturus and it's not the only one. This is a, a phenomena. A phenomena in the way we see a rainbow, in the way we see a halo, in the way we may see a lenticular cloud. It's a phenomena, an atmospheric phenomena. In other words, it's part of the Earth's atmosphere effect called scintillation. Scintillation is an ordinary stellar phenomena. It's prominent in this case with a star like Arcturus because of the location, 
because of the relatively low altitude of the star and because of its intense luminosity and its apparent brightness is the fourth brightest star in the nighttime sky. So to visual wavelengths of light, the light penetrates the atmosphere and it comes to your eyeball. Easy enough, but it isn't necessarily so easy because the atmosphere is like a soup of roiling currents of air and our wind heated by the sun is creating this sense of motion in the air itself. When starlight's passing at low altitude in the sky, it's traveling through a, a lot more air than when we look right above our heads at the zenith. As stars trend upward in the nighttime sky and progress upward through the seasons, the effect of scintillation drops off the further they move away from the horizon. We live in an age of high tech. If you have a smartphone, if you have a nice, impressive digital camera, if you've got a movie apparatus that can actually focus on this star with infinitely more resolution, power, and sensitivity than the photoreceptors in your eye, you're going to enhance that scintillation mightily. We should enjoy them. We should know them. We should understand their behavior. We should be able to track them and trace them. We should be able to communicate to our loved ones and our descendants what these things are. And we continue a chain of appreciation. So when you see Arcturus, give it a greeting. The spring is on the way.